are the love of my life. You are the love of my life. You are the hope that I cling to. You mean more. You mean more than this world to me. I would trade you for silver and gold. I would trade you for wishes I'm told. You are, you are, you are my everything. You are the love of my life. You are the love of my life. Jesus, you are the hope. You mean more than this world to me. I would trade you for silver and gold. I would trade you for riches untold. You are, you are, you are my. Scripture this morning comes from James, the third chapter, 
verses 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of the righteous is sown in peace by those who make peace. Hallelujah. These are the names on our prayer list this week. Please remember them in your prayers. Amen. Johnny Murphy, Jennifer Watson, Chara Marshall, Evelyn Campbell, Harriet Patilla, the Rochelle, Rochelle Jeffrey, Pearl Armstrong, Sanella Nelson, Amen. Glory West, Ruth and Edward Harrison, Bobby White, Marvin White, the Maurice Shackelford family, Barbara Shackelford, Sophie and Pete Mills, and John Adams. Good afternoon, Second Baptist. Let us go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we come before you calling upon your name, Heavenly Father, because there's no other name we know to call upon. Forgive us. We come before you, Heavenly Father, asking you to forgive us of our sins, those that we've committed, those, Heavenly Father, that we've thought about, and those, Heavenly Father, that have yet to surface. We just ask you to take them today and throw them into the sea of forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we come before you as humble as we know. Heavenly Father, because no other name we can call on can treat us like you. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before you because you are our rock. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before you because you are our comforter. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before you because you are our company keeper. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before you because we know you love us in spite of. Heavenly Father, we just ask you today to look and have mercy. There are a lot of people on the prayer list, Heavenly Father. I don't know everything that's wrong with them, Heavenly Father, but I know that you know. Touch today, Heavenly Father, the way that you see fit. Heavenly Father, if it's healing that they need, we ask you to heal. If it's prayer that they need, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to just wrap your loving arms around them. If they're lonely, Heavenly Father, we ask you to just be company for them. If they need a mother, a father, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be that. Heavenly Father, you know, and we're asking you, Heavenly Father, to just supply all the needs. And while you're supplying needs, Heavenly Father, we ask you to just help us to understand the way that you are going to move, Heavenly Father, so that we can do things acceptable in your sight. Heavenly Father, we know that you don't always move on our time, but you move in your time, Heavenly Father. And so we ask you, Heavenly Father, to help us to accept your time and not ours. Heavenly Father, we ask you today to just look up on our nation and what's going on, Heavenly Father. We know that everything that's going on that you know and you have a hand on and that it's all happening the way that you want it to happen. Heavenly Father, and then we ask you to look up on our state government. Heavenly Father, because every state needs you today. Heavenly Father, we ask you to just touch this virus that, that don't want to seem to go away, Heavenly Father. But we know you got a handle on that too. Heavenly Father, we ask you to look up on our county and our city government, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, look on everybody because we all need you today, Heavenly Father. And we can't do anything without you. Then, Heavenly Father, we ask you to look at the churches that are open today in your name, standing today, Heavenly Father, in your name. We ask you to just wrap your loving arms around those, Heavenly Father. And then, Heavenly Father, I ask a special blessing upon Second Baptist. We need you today, Heavenly Father. We can't do anything without you. 
Heavenly Father, continue to lead, guide, and direct our pastor so that he can lead, guide, and direct us. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just keep him and his family safe as they travel, Heavenly Father, and give them traveling grace back home. Heavenly Father, and then not only Second Baptist, but every church. And then, Heavenly Father, we ask you to look up on those that are locked up mentally, physically, and emotionally, Heavenly Father. We can't do anything without you. Heavenly Father, we need you today. We need you, Heavenly Father. I ask you to just bring out your love. Pour your love out on us, Heavenly Father. And then lastly, Heavenly Father, I ask that you help us, your children, to be that light that people see. I ask us to be that beacon, Heavenly Father, that you can bring, so that we can bring others unto you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, and then I ask you to just give us the love that we need one to another so that when one fall, we all fall. When one stand, Heavenly Father, we all stand. Because, Heavenly Father, we need you today, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just need you. And then, Heavenly Father, a special blessing upon families. Satan is attacking our families at every way, any way that he knows how. But we ask you, Heavenly Father, to touch our families today, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to let the men be men and the women be women. Heavenly Father, to lead God our children because they need us today, Heavenly Father, and we need you. Heavenly Father, we can't do anything without you. But Heavenly Father, with you, we can do all. Once again, I want to give you all honor, praise, and glory and say thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything that you've done. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything that I know that you can and will do. But most of all, Heavenly Father, I thank you because you love us. Heavenly Father, these and all we ask in thy name. Amen. We just have a few short announcements. Um, men's meeting, Saturday, July 17th at 11 a.m. And the Saginaw Valley Baptist District Association annual session is July 11 through 15. It's virtual and in person at the Wolverine headquarters. And our Pastor Smith will be speaking Wednesday at. Amen. We have a we have a guest minister today. The man Amen. of God's name is Laron Armour, Minister Laron Armour, and he is going to bring us a word right after this next song. Amen. <laughs> I don't know. 
starry sea. Out on the starry sea. Out on the starry sea. I've been hungry. I've been hungry. I've been sick. I've been sick. I've been feeling misery. I've been feeling with misery. Long came Jesus. Long came Jesus. Jesus rescued me. I found the answer in prayer. I'll tell it everywhere. I know, I know, I know, I know what prayer can do. I know prayer, 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 prayer changes things. Opportunity to yeah. to stand in this sacred space. I know that he is very particular who stands here before you, Amen. and I certainly thank God for the opportunity. Amen. 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 There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Yeah. It is found in the book of Luke, chapter eight. Luke chapter eight. We are gonna start at verse twenty-two. Uh, govern yourselves as according to this house. I'm not sure whether you stand or whether. You don't stand all. It's, it's all going to be the word of God. Amen. Yes. All right. Amen. All right. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Say amen when you got it. Amen. Luke 8, 22. I'm certainly going to be before you long. Don't say your hallelujahs. Thank you, Jesus. Preach, <laughs> preaches, and, and amen. All right? All right. Amen. All right. All right. And the word of God reads, One day, One day. he got into a boat with his disciples, yeah. and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. Mm -hmm. Right. So they put out. And while they were sailing, he fell asleep. Mm -hmm. A windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water. And they were in danger. They went to him and woke him, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. Yeah. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Yeah. They ceased, mm -hmm. and there was a calm. He said to them, where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, who then is this? That he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. For just a few moments this afternoon, I would like to speak or preach from the subject, Lessons Learned in a Storm. Lessons Learned in a Storm. Most gracious Heavenly Father, not me, but thee. Mm. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Yeah. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Yeah. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. So, Lord, touch yeah. my hands, touch my feet. Yes, Lord. Yes, touch Lord. my mouth, Lord, speak through me. Yes. If you can use anything, Lord, well, you can use me. Yes. 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 Lessons learned in the storm. Yeah. I love watching programs where people are trying to accomplish something, whether it's they are building a monster truck or they are putting the house together from the ground floor, or whether they are upgrading a house, anything where people are trying to take anything from nothing into something. And therefore, I watch a lot of the History Channel and I 
watch a lot of Discovery Channel and one of my absolute favorite shows, and y'all don't judge me, Second Second Baptist, please don't judge me, but one of my absolute favorite shows is called Deadliest Catch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I got yeah. some yeah. Deadliest Catch yeah. fans in the house. Oh, amen. Oh, yeah. right. Now, it's, it's about crab fishermen who are on yeah. the Barren Sea, and, and the yeah. show has a lot of suspense, and it has a lot of drama because at any moment there can be a lot of danger and what makes the show so deadly is not what they're necessarily trying to accomplish which is catching crab but the constant changing conditions that take place while trying to catch that crab because in every episode there's one constant disruption in every episode there's one constant distraction and that there is there will be a story. Yes. 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 Right. yes. Right. No, you're right. Now let me say right now, this is no attempt to make light of actual storms. Yes. I recognize that we just got through dealing with a lot of heavy rains and floods, and a lot of people have lost power. There's true damage and carnage that can be caused by a storm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But in our text today, Luke, the great physician, presents Jesus as Savior for everyone, okay. for every race for every gender, for the rich and for the poor. Matter of fact, Stephanie Crowder suggests that Lucan theology is grounded in a Jesus who comes to show compassion to those who wound and speak evil, yeah. and speak about the evil of those who wound others. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's written to both the Gentile believers and the Roman officials. Matter of fact, Luke is considered one of the first Christian historians because of his orderly account of these events. All right, all right, Luke starts all right. from Jesus in the womb and works his way through the ministry of Jesus the Christ. So by chapter 5, Jesus has gathered some experience in ministry. He's been rejected and he's been accepted. Yeah. And he's received a following of people who want to see him do good and a following of people who don't want to see him be right, so all successful. Right. All right. So he's often surrounded by different types of people in the crowd. And he occasionally begins preaching just off the shore of a land in a boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And occasionally Jesus was known to take that same boat and travel away from Jewish territories. And scholars actually suggest that this is the first form of self-care, that Jesus took time to spend time in prayer to right, be alone right, and right. talk to God. All right. Now, I'm, I'm going to park the car, but I'm going to keep on keep it running. You think about that, church. Jesus all right, all right, all right, all right. took time, time to spend time alone yes. in prayer. prayer. Jesus, yes. let me say that one more time, yes. 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 took time to clear out all the noise, yes. Yes. to put do not disturb on the phone, all right, all right. To, to, to make the kids go to bed, to take time to spend time alone right, with right. God. Oh yes, oh yes. Doesn't that speak to something that we should do now? Yeah. yeah. Right. Amen. Therefore, in our text, the disciples are on a boat, and guess what? They are in an actual storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not like the deadliest catch. They are in a real battle with nature. However, their boats are not as vast as today's vessels. No, they don't have sonar to let them know that a storm is approaching. All right, all right. They don't have a CB radio to phone ahead to find out when the storm ends. No, their boats are described by commentaries as rickety. Y'all, right. just to put it plain, they are sailing in an aquatic hoopty. All right, all right, all right. All right. Come on. And, and, and the, the lake that they were on was 700 feet below sea level when the wind would come down and it would quickly fill up any vessel. I mean, it's understandable. They are scared because they think that they will surely die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at that, at that time, nothing matters to them but their lives. Because mm -hmm. yeah. water is filling the boat and they feel that there's nothing that they can do. Mm -hmm. Just like life when we find ourselves without backs up against the wall, and our yeah. situation seemed helpless and hopeless. Yeah. And Jesus decides to take a nap. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. But that would have been cool if the storm had not hit. Mm -hmm. All right. And right. the disciples are like, Lord, can't you see what's taking place? Do you understand what we are going through? And church, I tell you, it's in these times yeah. 
when the rubber meets the road to yes, not sir. just sound Christian and look Christian, but be Christian yes. moments yes. that we yes. get challenged yes, as believers. Yes, sir. I will submit to you, not only does this passage challenge our faith, but it also challenges who we say Jesus really is in our lives. And it's not just us. There's actually tension between the two writers, Mark and Luke. Yeah. Yeah. One is suggesting that the disciples are people of little faith, while the other is more tolerant to the fact that they are human beings on a sinking ship and they are scared. Yes. Yes. Now, I don't really want to be sensitive to actual storms, but what can a biblical, physical storm teach me about my spiritual storm? All right. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you asked. This text helps us deal with our personal Jesus yeah. stuff. Who he is to you and me in the midst of a storm. This stuff, miss and missteps we find ourselves in, whether we call them on our own or life journeys. This stuff, right. how did I get in this predicament, Jesus? Uh -huh. This stuff, why did they have to do that to me, Jesus? This stuff, yeah. why my child got to be the one acting a fool, Jesus? This uh -huh. stuff, why my marriage ain't as good on. as it could be, Jesus? This yeah. stuff, why they lay me off my job, Jesus? This stuff. Why my company have to be the company to close down, Jesus? This yeah, stuff. Yeah, why yeah, yeah. I have to be the one to catch COVID nineteen? Yes, yes. These storms are not just happenstance in our lives. We can learn some valuable lessons about Jesus in these spiritual storms. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. I'm right here in verse 23. First, we see that Jesus is available. Mm -hmm. They're in a storm. The situation is scary. Yeah. It's safe to say that they've heard of people who have died in similar situations. Things started out normal. The trip was peaceful. Mm -hmm. Everything was going well. Everyone was accounted for. All needs were met. Life was okay. Let me say that again. Yeah. Things started off normal. All the right, trip yes. was peaceful. Everything yeah. was cool All in the right. game. Everyone was accounted for. Needs were met. Life was okay. Then all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Right. That, 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 that sound that sound familiar? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. I was talking to somebody about this and they said, man, that sounds like a scary movie. <laughs> well, but don't life seem like a, a scary movie? I mean, we like to act like we have it all under control, that we have life all together, and that we control everything, but the reality is none of us in here can place the clouds in the sky and put the sun in the air for a beautiful sunny day. None of us can remove that sun and replace it with the moon and surround it with the backdrop of stars. Come to think of it, none of us in here can guarantee an extra day. None of us in here can offer an extra hour. None of us in here can pass an extra minute. None of us in here can give an extra second. All right, all right. Nobody but an almighty God can do that. And we know God, he sent his son Jesus. And we know Jesus, he's the Prince of Peace. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the Lord. He's the Master. He's the Logos. He's the Rose of Sharing. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. They're in a storm. Things started looking bad. Things were good. They started good, but then they got scary. They in the storm. They think we are surely going to die, but church, Jesus is on the move. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the great philosopher Aristotle calls him the unmovable mover. And just like he's available to them, he's uh, available to us, and we don't have to walk down to the bottom of the ship to get him or wake him up. We can just... Call his name. Oh, yes, sir. Jesus. Yes, sir. When times get difficult, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. He's our ever present help. Yeah. Jesus. 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 When we're at the end of our patience, Jesus. Yeah. When you're ready to throw in the towel, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. That's the name above all names, and Jesus yeah. is available. Oh, yes, yeah. he is. Secondly, we see that Jesus is aware. They wake Jesus in a panic to tell them. To tell him how bad their situation is. Well, and and there's, there, there's repetition for a reason to show just how bad the panic was. Master, master. Yeah, all right, all right. That describes just how much they needed Jesus. Right. You ever been in a situation or a storm that's so bad that you couldn't really even gather out the words Ooh, to say no more? Right. That you couldn't just muster up a sentence to just yeah. bring it all together? Yeah. And Jesus is sleeping. Come on now. It's a display of his divinity. Oh, yes. Coupled in his humanity. Yes. 
Jesus, the one who turned water into wine. Jesus, Jesus. the one who offers living water to the woman at the well. Jesus, the woman who, the one who walks on water now decides he's going to take a nap on water. (laughs) (laughs) How? How can he be sleep Mm -hmm. at a time like this? If we're honest, this question has moved across the minds of many believers. Because sometimes during the most trying times and storms of our lives, it mm-hmm. appears that Jesus has left the building mm-hmm. and he well, is silent on the subject. Yes. Here it is. It's a picture of a child that's laying in bed during a thunderstorm. And when the lightning gets louder, the wind starts to crash against the house and that child gets scared. Yes. And then they realize that daddy's at home and, and they get out of bed, knees shaking, teeth chattering, yes. teeth yes. clacking. Yes walking down the dark hallway, scared, on their way to find Daddy. And they find themselves at the door of Daddy's room, and they manage to open the door and find Daddy. And they immediately feel better and realize the storm was not as bad as they thought. All right, all right. But guess what? The winds didn't stop hitting the house. Mm -hmm. The lightning didn't get softer. What changed? The comfort came when they were in the presence of their father. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The truth oh, yes. is, Jesus is always at work. Romans yes, 8, 28 yes. reminds yes. us of that. And all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. We just got to remember that daddy's at home. Yes. All right. All right. We have a comfort. Like and the that. storm doesn't have to change when you know where daddy's room is. That, that we have a heavenly father that's going to let us know that everything is going to be all right. All right. All right. He knows what we're going through. Yes, sir. All right. Sometimes he just wants to hear it from us. Yes. That's why prayer is so important in the yes. life of a believer. Pastor Carmen Bean said we need to pray over it. Yeah. We need to pray in it. And we show sure enough need to pray through it. Yes. Oh, God. God. Lastly, Jesus is the answer. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. Jesus mm-hmm. awakes and calms the storm. And Jesus asks them, Where's your faith? Where is your faith? Now, now, come on, Jesus. I mean, you must understand it was in the midst of a storm. They got scared. They didn't know if they were going to make it. I mean, surely we we all understand because we get scared sometimes. Uh I mean, we get scared. We didn't know our child was going to do this. All right. We we get scared. We didn't know the mistakes that we made in our 20s was going to be the issues in our 30s that had to be worked on in our 40s that we still hanging on to in our 50s that we praying we can shake them off in our 60s. We get scared sometimes. I mean, mean, we didn't realize we was going to lose Big Mama and Big Daddy when we lost it. I mean, we we get scared. We didn't understand we was going to have more bills than money. I mean, we get scared. We didn't realize that at times life was going to get so difficult. Yeah. Jesus, you asking me, where's my faith? Can't you see? I'm in the midst of a storm. All right, all right. It's it's, it's a question, but it's answered with the question. Jesus asks, where's your faith? faith?" They respond, who is he? Uh The disciples got to see Jesus on another level. And the storm provides an opportunity to gain a deeper meaning of Christ yeah. for them and for us. Right. That our view of Christ will keep growing and keep evolving, however, church, it may occur through a storm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's deciding how we want to see Jesus. Either he's the one who comforts and keeps us in the storm, or he's not. Well, all right. A few Christmases ago, my grandfather, who at the time was 94 years old, on the family prayer call, he's talked about how excited he was because he had learned so much about God and that he knew God. Think about this, 94 years old. He said he knew God on a whole nother level. Hmm. And we should get excited about that because it's yeah. proof right. oh, that yeah. God continues to pour into us. Yeah. It's proof yes, that God continues to give us answers. He continues to use us. He continues to grow us. He continues to strengthen us if we stay in his word. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. In life, there will be some tests to determine yeah. if he's yeah. in control of the storm mm-hmm. or are we in control of the storm well, without yeah. complaining, our panicking, and our worry. Sometimes we just got to fake it till you make it. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> all right, and all Jesus right. is saying, I know you're in the middle of the storm, Come on, son. but don't forget who invited you on the journey to begin. Yes. Right. Yes. Don't miss how this journey began. Jesus is the one who said, Come, let us go to the other side. Yeah. 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 You yeah. think Jesus didn't know the storm was coming? All right, all right. In our text, Jesus demonstrates to the disciples another aspect of his power. Yeah. Now he demonstrates his power over the weather. Yes. Yeah. And if Jesus can speak peace to an actual storm, mm -hmm. he sure enough can speak peace to the spiritual storm. Yes. 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 My brothers and sisters, Jesus initiates the journey. And not only does he kick off the trip, but he tells them the destination before they even leave. Yeah, yeah. And that's good news because if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have started on a journey with Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Think about it. They they are scared for their lives, but no one abandons them. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. They are concerned, but no one abandons them. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No one says, we out of here. Mm -hmm. They went to Jesus. Yeah. Yes. He has not promised a smooth an easy trip. No, no. No. I, I, I wish there was a pill I could give you. <laughs> it's not going to be easy. Uh -uh. It's, it's arduous and it's nerve wracking and it's frustrating and sometimes it gets scary and I right. guarantee you will laugh and I guarantee you will cry. I'm just yes. here to encourage you to stay on the boat. Yes. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. Stay on the boat. Yeah. My grandma would say, run on and see what the end is. All right. All right. All right. All right. Remember, whatever takes place during the journey, oh, yeah. Jesus is available. Oh, yes, he is. Jesus is aware. And Jesus is the answer. Yes. 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 If you have not started your journey with Jesus, mm -hmm. I would like to offer Christ to you, my brother. I would like to offer Christ to you, my sister. Yes. The great news about starting a journey with Jesus is Jesus has given us that destination. And we know that destination is in glory. Yes. Yeah. That whatever we may go through, that Jesus is there with us, he will not leave us nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. I offer Christ to you, my brother. I offer Christ to you, my sister. And if you already know that, Jesus, then you should be in celebration right now. Yes. Yeah. Because you know while it may be a difficult journey, Jesus is there. Yes, he is. And you can always reach out to your heavenly father. Yes. Is there anyone? I couldn't think of a better church. I couldn't think of a better pastor. Amen. 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 Amen.